My name is Nicole Bousma and I'm the CEO of the Australian College of Environmental Studies which runs nationally accredited training in testing water damage buildings. I'm very excited to uh, release the Mould app. Uh, it has been created in consultation with Flow Mobile in order to save you so much time. We all don't like writing reports and this is a game changer in the industry. Uh, what the app enables you to do is to download data such as photos, thermal imaging and moisture maps in real time in order to write the report whilst you're there conducting the assessment of the water damage building. So what I'd like to do in this video is to take you through um, the features of the app when you're doing your audit at the client's house. It's probably best to do this on an iPad where you have a larger screen so that you have the capacity to um, um, see the screen fully. So what you'll find when you set up a job, which Paul has created in a different video, the features of the app and how to set up a job, you'll see this menu as such. The report details essentially mean that you can um, upload your disclaimer, which of course is very, very important that you all have a disclaimer for legal purposes. Um, also that you have the objectives. So objectives are what the client hopes to achieve from the assessment, essentially why they brought you here and what concerns they have about the site. Now, when I'm collating this data, I'm normally at home doing a Zoom session with the client because I don't want to have to spend more than a minute more in a water damage building. So I gather the exposure history um, online before I go to the job. And the beauty with this app is you can download that data while you're talking them over either on the phone or online. Uh, you have the option to exclude adverse health effects. That's important if you're doing insurance jobs. That could be your last insurance job if you include that. But the benefit of this here, if you're doing assessments for clients who think they're sick as a result of being in potentially water damaged buildings, is that it'll have access to the latest scientific research on the impact of fungal structures on human health. So you can opt to include that in the report. It's already built in. The day of the assessment, um, looking at what temperature it is, is there rain? That's important because um, the outdoor sample will be influenced by specific spores like your basidio spores when it's raining. So it's important to know that. And of course, area classification. Is this a city, metropolitan area? Is it rural or is it in a remote area? And of course, lastly, the climate zone is important um, in terms of risk for adverse health effects from mold. The next thing in the menu is to get to property information and building history. Now, I will gather again this data online, either phone consultation or Zoom with the client. So I'm putting it into the app as I'm speaking to them. The first thing is contents in a previously water damaged building, which is a very common cause of contamination in the built environment if clients are bringing large soft furnishings and textiles like sofas or mattresses into their um, home, clean home or new rental etc which could then impact um, uh, that particular room so knowing if there are previously water damage con uh, items that they're brought in is very important so you need to document that when the house was built that it helps us assess risk i.e lead asbestos um, you know, the older it is, the more likely it's been associated with water damage, roof leaks, plumbing problems, etc. So, and also, you know, the older it is, it means it probably has had multiple tenants and uh, as a result of that. So where the, the year was renovated is critical. Renovations, of course, can expose the occupants to very high levels of fungal particulate if bathroom renovations are done and there's hidden mold and they did not set up containment or negative air. Uh, machines or air scrubbers that can result in cross-contamination. I do find quite a lot of my clients get quite sick after a bathroom reno because they did not set up containment. So knowing about any renovations, being able to document that. How many floors does the home have or the built environment? Uh, Subfloor, is it present or absent? Uh, is the client aware of any visible mould? Of course, visible mould implies condition three surface. So uh, visible mould, by the time you see, you're looking at you know, 60 million spores per square inch, um, by the time you register it. So it's very important as a marker to understand where this visible mould is in the home. Um, 
And I also want to make the point that some of the worst homes I see, you cannot see or smell mould. So don't be fooled by the fact that there's no visible mould, there's no condensation, because some of the worst homes I see, you cannot see it, and the lab results come back and it's pretty bad. Condensation is important because we know it's hit dew point, you've got sufficient water vapour that's hit dew point on a cold surface that's resulted in condensation. It's also another flag for inadequate ventilation, especially in your wet areas like your bathrooms, your laundries, and possibly even in the kitchen. So is the client aware of any condensation anywhere in the house that needs to be documented? Odour, are they aware of any odour? That's important. Odour is a marker for microbial growth. It's the microbial volatile organic compounds that um, fungi will release to try and kill off its competitor in order to decompose your house. So odour is a very important marker to document in all reports. Housekeeping and maintenance is also important. You know, knowing how often they air, they open windows for cross ventilation because that has a dilution effect on fungal particulate. Um, how often they clean and dust the surfaces is very important. I often find in homes that have higher levels of water vapour or who are in humid environments that of course there's microbial growth throughout the house and the more dust there is, the more macas there is for mould, <laughs> the more mould there is. So the way in which they deal with dust is important to the level of spores that they're likely to be associated with. And one of the most important things I teach in the course is the vacuum cleaner. If it's not fitted with a HEPA filter, then it's essentially picking up that fungal particulate on the surfaces on the floor and then recirculating it into the air, which can take you know up to eight hours for Aspergillus and Penicillium to fall. So the type of vacuum cleaner they have is also something that's important to document. Mattresses, you know, if they're old, you know, more than 10 years old and they've been water damaged or exposed to urine or anyone with chemotherapeutic drugs, etc which comes out through their sweat, it's going to be contaminated. So that's a risk for us that we need to wear gloves and also a flag that the client may need to consider replacing their mattresses and pillows is very, very important. Any additional information you want to add about the previous occupants in the house, were they healthy, were there other water events, anything else that you may want to add, you can add to this property information section. Occupants, so this is where I'm still talking to the client uh, online or on the phone as I'm interviewing them before I go to the job. And you can see here, this is an add item. So when you add an item, you're essentially, each occupant in the house is written here, their name, the age group, when they moved into the house, uh, occupation if relevant, because the occupation alone may indicate that they're exposed to other sources of mould. For example, landscape gardeners, farmers, of course, with the hay, highly contaminated, um, hitchhikers, cave hikers, all of these sort of environments can increase the risk to fungal particulate. Health issues, any health issues that particular client has developed uh, and specifically developed since they've moved into this home um, or symptoms that have got worse. Now, we're not taking a full medical history. What we're looking for is asthma, allergies, uh, skin related problems like dermatitis, and long-term fatiguing syndromes like chronic fatigue syndrome or autoimmune disorders that began when they moved into this environment or after renovation. They're the ones that are more likely to be associated with water damage buildings. So this enables us to assess the risk when you're analyzing lab results. If you've got a slightly elevated fungal particulate like aspen, for example, or ketomium, that's a red flag for a, a child living in this environment or someone with asthma or who is immunocompromised, say with cancer, that those levels may not necessarily be acceptable as opposed to someone who has no health problems. So to me, health taking a health history is important. Checking for things like asthma, allergies, and long-term fatigue-related syndromes is critical because it enables me to assess the level of risk, especially if the symptoms are better when they're away from the built environment um, and if they get worse when they're in that home or workplace. What percentage of time do they spend at home is critical. Why? Because the more time they spend in a water damage environment, the more likely they're going to get sick. You'll often find when you're doing assessments that the partner uh, it may not be sick because they're hardly home. They're working 10, 12 hours a day or they travel as part of their work. So they're not exposed. The duration of exposure is significantly less for an, a, another member of the family and that's important to know. Now, 
when it comes to documenting all of this about occupants, you have the option to document it but exclude it ultimately from the report. If the report's going to insurance company, obviously you would not want to include that. Um, however, you can still document it and access it for your purposes. Um, the type of clients that we see as building biologists are um, get coming to us because they think their house is making them sick, so we definitely document all of this. For each occupant, you're adding them as an item. So for each occupant, you're going through the same process again. And this will be set up as a table in the report. I'll show you the outcome of what this looks like. So that's the beauty with this. Each person is added as an item. Water events. Again, you add each water event um, as an item. So simply click and then the date that the water event or approximate time when the water event occurred, the description is important. If it was a recent event, you are determining the class and category of water. So category, of course, is the level of contamination and class is the uh, level or surface area that was impacted based on the ICRC S520 standard. Description is what actually happened, what part of the house was impacted, what substrates were impacted, etc. So you have the option to write quite a lot of data for each water event. And of course, don't forget to include how they dried it and how quickly they dried it. If it's not dried within 48 hours, it will support microbial growth. Um, some of the worst times we see is when carpet gets wet and it's not um, adequately remediated or restored. If that carpet remains wet for more than 72 hours, it will be a source of microbial growth. And these are where we get the worst tertiary colonizers like Chetomium and Stachybotrys. So I want to know any part of the home, especially the flooring, like carpets and underlays that have been wet, that have not been remediated because more often than not in the air sample, they'll come up high. So for each water event, put it here. This can include bursting flexible braided water hoses and that would be an event in its own right. It could include a roof leak. Uh, it could include um, subfloor related issues, drainage problems during a particular storm, etc. So each event is uh, uploaded as a separate event by adding an item. Then that's what you would do all of that before you go on site is to gather that data from the client. Um, and you're already putting it into the app. So it's already being populated before you even get on site. The next thing is to take a cover page photo. So this is when I'm actually on site with my iPad and I'm taking a picture of the front of the home, um, which you can upload then and there into the app. And it will put it straight onto the front page. For consultants, you can add an item here. So the person who's undertaking the job their details would be here, their name, qualifications, experience, and any memberships um, you would add here. If it's just one person, you're only adding one item. If there are multiple people involved in assessing that uh, environment, then you would add more than one person. Then you're on site, and here you're taking air quality readings. Now, this is critical because we want to know what the temperature, relative humidity, and specific humidity is outside and every part of that environment, um, including the roof space and the subfloor if they have one. And the reason is because if there is elevated water vapor in the rooms, you need to be able to explain why. Now the cause of mold is moisture that can be due to water vapor or it could be due to liquid water events. Don't underestimate that living in a humid environment um, can cause dramatic and extensive microbial growth and mold related problems. So with this, what we're doing is identifying, are we taking an external reading? Uh, what location? So it may be north elevation front of the home or front garden, for example. You're taking an air quality reading. This will automatically document the time as long as your iPad is, is up to date. Um, temperature, relative humidity and specific humidity for the outdoor reading. For each item, for each time you're taking a reading, uh, you are adding another item. So then I'd go inside and then do a location. So looking at the floor plan, I'd go into say the living room, what's the time, temperature, relative humidity, specific humidity, etc. And I would do that in every part of the home, including the roof space and the subfloor. And this will be built in the uh, report as a table. Now, as I said, this is important because if you find that the water vapor 
uh, is higher in certain parts of the house or a part of the house, then there are several reasons this can occur, which we discuss in the course. And one of them may be moisture-laden materials, such as a, a rising damp-related problem, resulting in evaporation of water into the air and causing high levels of specific humidity. Um, if the roof, if the subfloor, for example, has um, low uh, relative humidity, then it's more likely to hit dew points. So often we find anomalies in the subfloor where the relative humidity is lower, which means dew point is going to temperature is going to be a lot higher. So you can end up getting these microclimates of mold, um, you know, in the subfloor under the hardwood floors, for example, because the humidity, relative humidity is low. Um, and of course, cold air holds less moisture, whereas warmer air, high humidity holds more moisture, so less likely to hit dew point. So we discussed that all in the course for those who are not familiar with that. So I would do an air temperature and humidity temperature in every part of the house. And I'd also go outside front, outside back to take uh, those readings as well. So I'm literally adding those air quality readings one by one into the app. And that's the first thing I do. I think it's important to do that at the beginning of testing water damage buildings because you want to know if there's high levels of water vapor in those, say, for example, the back bedroom. It, that way you'll be looking more specifically with your thermal imaging and your moisture mapping to see is there moisture laden material that's evaporating that's causing these high levels of humidity. Okay, so then we get into the good stuff, which is the inspection itself. So with the inspection, you're adding an item and essentially I would always recommend our students study the outside first. The location may be front of the building, such as north elevation. Uh, the feature may be, you know, well, the front of the building, as I said, could be, you know, um, brick construction, signs of water damage that you're noticing on the north elevation of the house. Is there signs of water damage or mold? Yes or no. What are your observations? You know, if there's cracks, um, for example, all of these things you, you want to document. So with this, you're looking at a specific feature on each part of the exterior of the house. This could be the roof, and it may be missing flashing um, where moisture could uh, have access, there could be moisture ingress. It could be um, for each of these, you'd add an item. So it might be, a gutting gutter issue on the south elevation of the home. So I'd click external and then discuss. Well, the gutter appears to not be connected to the stormwater system. This is what I observe. Here's a photo as evidence that it's not connected to stormwater. If I do any thermal imaging, I'd, I'd add it there. If I do any uh, meters for moisture mapping, I'd add it here as well. So for each thing you see on the exterior, like missing flashing, gutter issues, water pooling immediately around the home. I'd click external and I'd write this down. So this is an item, each item, each issue is written separately. And you'll see how that will be documented in the app. So what you're looking at, where is it, are there signs of water damage, and write down what your observations are. And of course, to take a photo to back up what concerns you have. It may be that the windows aren't properly fitted into the building, there seems to be gaps. Um, so that would be a feature in its own right. So looking at the exterior. It may be that you have efflorescence around the perimeter of the uh, brick home that's coming up two layers of bricks up, implying that there's moisture wicking up the building envelope. So that may be another feature. So each thing you see on the exterior would be written as a separate item. Then of course, when you go inside, you still click on inspection, add an item, and then you click interior. Now with the interior, there's two parts to this. So um, when I'm looking at the room, I'm officially looking at um, obviously the level it's on, am I on the ground level, first floor, second floor, the location. So that will be the actual room you're in. When you walk into a room, it's really important. Did you smell odor? Uh, it's important to document that first because odor is the first thing to go within minutes of walking into a space. It can be handy to have smell coffee beans as you're walking around the building because it'll help to desensitize, it'll help to um, clear that smell so that you can smell when you go into different rooms, you can be more observant of any odor. Odor is important, as I said, it represents microbial growth. Um, so odor, none minimal, moderate, heavy, visible. Now this is your perception. Do you see any visible or settled dust anywhere here? 
from your inspection, just of the room. Any clutter, none minimal, moderate, heavy. Now, dust and clutter are food for mold, so it's important that they are documented. Obviously, if you see clutter, I would always take a photo of the room um, from the doorway so I can get the whole room into the picture and just my general observations. Now, we're not focusing yet on a particular surface. We're just looking at the room as a whole and looking at in terms of odor, visible mold, clutter, pest activity, etc. When you're looking at a surface within the room, what you're gonna do is you're gonna add it as an item. Again, add the item, go internal, and now we're gonna click on surface. So again, what level are we on? Make sure you, it's the ground or first or second floor of the location. Make sure you use the same words for that room as you did for the room. So the app will bring it together in the same part of the report. So say, for example, this may be the master bedroom. The surface, what is the surface that I'm looking at? So it might be the east wall um, within that master bedroom. Observations, visible mold. Um, on the east wall of the master bedroom. So take a photo. Remember photos are very, very important as evidence of what you're seeing. If you're seeing visible mold, you're then rating it according to the NIOSH tool. Um, zero is nothing. One is up to the size of a piece of paper. Two is between the size of a piece of paper and an interior door. And if you click three, it means that the visible mold was greater than the size of an interior door. <laughs> if that's the case, you should be wearing PPA. Water damage, again, the same criteria. If you see staining, delamination, cupping of timber boards, um, um, peeling paint, all these things would be categorized in water damage. Condensation, if you're seeing condensation in on any surface of the room, you would be documenting it here. If you do thermal imaging, you would choose the file and upload it here. So you take it with your iPad, it'll go straight into the app. If you're going to do any moisture mapping of that particular surface, you would indicate which meter you used. Was it non-penetrating or pins? Um, and then you upload the moisture map. Now, the moisture map, what I suggest or I recommend my students to do is to go on to Snap Markup. That's an app that it's free that enables you to take pictures and draw on those pictures in order to uh, be able to draw on the picture to see what the figures were for your moisture readings and draw the boundary of where the moisture was elevated. Um, this is very, very helpful and will save you a lot of time. This is how we do moisture maps at the college. So Snap Markup is a good app um, to take pictures and then to annotate those photos before you upload them here. So again, when you're doing a inspection of a surface within the house, you're going to go into the inspection section, add an item, go internal and then surface. So for each surface, you'll go through this process level, location, what's the surface? Maybe the west wall of this particular room. What did you observe? Photo, etc., and go through the same thing again. So pretty much every surface that has an issue, you would add as a separate item um, in this and just go through that. Yep, so that's how we use this section. This is really where you're gonna be spending most of your time when you're assessing a water damage building into this part of the app. HVAC. Now, for HVAC systems are a common cause of uh, microbial growth and fungal particulates, so it's very important that you document what the um, um, HVAC systems are, when they were last serviced, uh, your observation, etc. So just add the item, have it as a type. So the type may be evaporative cooler or refrigerative split system or something like that. The location will be the room it's in and the wall that it's on. Was there any visible mold or settled dust on the surface? That's important to document um, it, and to put that there. So laboratory analysis, I would document what fungi was present. It's very important that you do an, a swab of the split system. 99% of them are contaminated because clients do not um, get them cleaned regularly and often the cleaning isn't appropriate so make sure they're bagged and a high pressure hose is used especially towards the barrel fan. So the lab analysis I just write down the genre of fungi that was present on the swab that I tested and this is a really good way to show clients how bad their systems are and why they need to be regularly serviced. So take a photo of you know if they look dirty etc and um, as I said, I prefer a swab over a buy tape, but you know, we discussed that in the course. So for each uh, HVAC system, I add it as an item, the type, 
where it's located, east wall of bedroom four, visible mold or dust present, and then what the genre of fungi was. So I, I do the swab, get the results back, and then I put what the genre was here. And then of course on site I'm taking photos. So I would do this for each each one. Um, samples. Then um, with the samples, what I'm doing here is for each sample I'm doing, I tend to work that I air sample every part of the house, including the roof void and the subfloor. And the reason is because it's impossible to show where the microbial growth is coming from and cross contamination unless you're testing the whole house. I know it's expensive, but well worth it because if you only do a sample, a few samples, you often don't get the right picture to be able to make an appropriate scope of works to find out where the growth is happening and how to um, develop this scope of work. So with the samples, I will then determine where the samples are and I take photos of the buyer pump on the tripod. So ground level, location master bedroom, sample number one, it was an air sample. Uh, was it outdoor sample? So I click here, then take a photo of the actual buyer pump on the um, tripod as evidence that it was conducted. So each sample you will add as an item, each sample. So uh, another one might be an air sample that was say a sample number two, um, then take a photo of that etc and the level will, location may be master bedroom. So each air sample that I do I'm going to document as a separate item and take photos as evidence that it was done. All right, um, when you're doing surface samples, it's exactly the same as air samples, except you're clicking surface. The surface sample will ask you, um, sorry, the app will ask you, is it a bulk dust swab or tape sample? Um, what And then the condition, the condition you'll determine once you've got the lab results back. So condition one is normal fungal ecology, condition two is high settled spores which require remediation, and condition three is microbial growth. So all condition two and three surface samples must uh, be remediated. So um, this section, the condition, you will go back to this part of the port when you get the lab results back. Take a photo, remember, when you're taking photos of surface samples, make sure you have stick it notes next to them with the job number, the date, and what that surface is, east wall of Johnny's bedroom, for example, as evidence that you actually took the sample in case this gets to a court of law. So always best to have a really good paper trail and lots and lots of photos. So to, take, to do this section, you're essentially clicking on samples, add item, and each sample, whether it's an air sample, a bulk sample, or a surface sample, you're going to populate each item into this section here. So just follow the prompts. Now you'll notice once you get the lab results, you go back to this section and you're going to document what the fungal, the genre of fungi was found in these samples. So ascospores, what percentage of ascospores was on the slide? Percentages I think are really important, especially when you're comparing the outdoor sample with internal samples. So aspen, um, what was the count? What percentage did it account for on the microscopic slide? If the percentages don't add up, the app will prompt you to re-go through this and make sure that the percentages count. If there's fungi that's not present on the app, you can put it in as other spores, including the percentage. So basically, for each sample that you're doing in this section, uh, when you get the lab results back, you're going to come back here and then you're going to document what the uh, lab found in terms of the type of fungi and the percentage on the slide. And you'll see in the in the report how this comes up. It's just beautiful. Equipment used in methodology. So the beautiful thing about this with the methodology is once it's done, the guys at Flow Mobile will then make sure it's fixed for all of your reports. You don't have to keep repeating yourself every time you go, I'm using an MMS2, I'm using a you know um, thermal imaging, uh, Flow C5, for example. So what you're doing here is you're adding an item saying what equipment categories and this would normally be things like moisture meters for example or air quality meters that are measuring humidity so equipment category instrument what it was the make and the model the function so briefly what the function what does it do um, and include the range here in terms of the figures so that the figures in your report um, the client can see what the rationale is for that whether it's excessive or not 
how it was used. Often in court of law, they'll want to know exactly, very simply, how to use the meter. And you'll see in terms of the report I'm about to show you how I would write this section up. Then of course, a photo of that item, that particular equipment. For each item you used for that job, you add as a separate item and you're putting this down here. But as I said, once this is there, get the guys from Flow Mobile to make that fixed as part of your report so you don't have to keep adding this in every time you create a new job. Now, so once you've done the job, you've got the lab results back, you're then going to be writing um, what's actually going on in your observations. So with the observations, interpretations and recommendations, you're doing this. So for each observation you found, issue, basically each issue you found on site, you're documenting this as a separate item. So the reference number, the location, observations, moisture source. Now remember, all mold is, mold isn't the problem here because spores are found everywhere from the Arctic to the Antarctica. It's quite normal to have hundreds of spores per centimeter squared in your home. However, if you have pathogenic molds like Aspergillus, Penicillium, Ketomium, Cladosporium, Stachybotrys, Wollemia, that is a red flag. So um, identifying where the moisture is. If you don't know where the moisture source is, then you can't develop a scope of works or remediate because the cause of mold is moisture. So it's very important when you're doing assessments to always think, identify the sources of moisture and moisture laden materials that cause microbial growth, otherwise you're not doing your job. So the moisture source may be um, elevated water vapour from moisture laden materials from a roof leak that occurred two years ago, for example. Or it might be steam cleaning carpets, oh my god what a nightmare that is. Steam cleaning carpets where the carpets were never clean, were never dried within 48 hours and now they're a source of microbial growth. So for each issue you found in this property, I would set it up as a separate item where you document it here, your interpretation, what condition you think that room or that substrate is and what your recommendation is for each issue. Um, who you should refer to, whether it's a double ICSC, a mold remediator or a hydrologist to address the drainage or a licensed plumber to identify the roof leak. Um, this is where you get the opportunity to write that in. The priority is, I love this feature about the priorities because clients are often overwhelmed when they get reports and they'll go, well, what do I need to do first? Well, this really helps them navigate that if it's immediate priority. You know, low to medium priorities would be, you know, upgrade your stormwater system, clean your um, leaf litters from the gutters, for example, all that stuff that most homes have issues with. So um, you can categorize them accordingly. So basically in this section, observations, interpretations and recommendations, this is summarizing what issues you found in the home. You're adding each item is one issue that you're documenting and providing information to help the client understand what needs to be done. Executive summary is essentially summarising it for those clients who don't want to read a report and want to know what's happening in the house and how do I fix it in one or two pages. Um, the executive summary will get you to summarise what the specific humidity readings were. So if they were elevated, you need to explain what that means and what needs to be done to fix it. Same with your moisture mapping results. If the moisture readings were high in the, in the en suite, for example, um, you need to state that. Same with the sample results. Overall with the, the samples, what does that mean for the fungal particulate? Was it elevated fungal particulate in certain parts of the house? Which part of the house were they high? And what's your interpretation of that? The executive summary then goes into a summary of your findings and the recommendations. So pretty much what you put into the observation, interpretation, recommendations, you're summarizing this in bullet points uh, and simplifying it so it's very clear this is the problem, this is how to fix it. This is the problem, this is how to fix it. And of course, the opportunity here to also include a conclusion. Yep. So this is where you'd focus on the big red flags that need to be addressed. The attachments. So for your attachments, you can import a PDF. For example, if the client gave you a floor plan that you want to upload to the report, uh, the chain of custody from the lab you want to upgrade, in, um, import as a PDF. Um, alternatively, you can add an item. So you would say, is this a floor plan, a lab report, chain of custody or moisture map? 
and now what you can do is choose file and it will either go into your PC to find that file or you can upload it then from the iPad that you've got. So this is the beauty with this and you can alter the size and the way it's presented whether it's portrait or landscape um, which is fantastic. I really love this section. So uploading all your attachments um, including your labs. Now the beauty with this is you can also document what this, how the, it flows, so which ones um, are presented first and with your lab reports some lab reports we get can be quite extensive 12 pages I may only want to include page 2 and 3 so even though I've uploaded the PDF I can choose to delete some of the pages on those um, attachments which is really great lastly QC and sign off if there's someone who signed off or if you've you know double check that the reports ready to go you have the capacity to do that so that's when you're on site and also once you've got the results, your capacity to, um, to document all of that data. Let's have a look at what the report looks like. This is the exciting bit. So once you click the report, then click on download PDF. The PDF will provide all of the page numbers in the report. And you can see here it's going to look something like this. So with the picture I took of the cover page, it's documented in the report. And the great thing with Flow Mobile is you can choose different templates to use as your front cover. So you don't have to use this one. You can use, there's a many you can choose from. And they'll put your logo, your address, and um, in here. With the client, when you documented the client's address, it will automatically put it here into the front of the report so that's the beauty with the front page um, the address will then upload it from Google Maps automatically so you don't have to search for it and of course it provides the details that you put into the report the disclaimer here that you've already put in consultant profile and of course the table of contents page so the report will look like this introduction background objective occupants notice that there's extra information here I haven't discussed they are um, adverse health effects associated with water damage buildings legislation in Australia which you can take out if you're in a different country or update um, standards for testing water damage buildings exposure guidelines and a little bit on mold remediation methodology assessments results observations interpretations and recommendations so this relates to that part of the report where you're identifying what the various issues are and of course the appendices so it's beautifully presented it's easy to follow for clients and they can easily navigate by just clicking any any of these sections and going straight to that part of the report executive summary what your findings were what your recommendations are and the conclusion ideally in one or two pages um, for clients who don't want to read the whole report this is where it is a summary introduction and background which we took when we when you do the phone consultation or zoom consultation with the client and gather that data this is where it's showing up in the report so what the objectives were for the client um, the year they moved in, any health effects they had. So for each person, it goes into any health issues that they have. Property information and building history, when it was built and renovated, what the renovation involved, visible mold condensation that the client was aware of, any odor they were aware of, housekeeping issues and any other additional features. So the thing I love about the app and the presentation is that it's easy to read for the client. It's not content. Um, heavy in terms of essay format it's in tables which make it easier for them to read now this section is already pre-populated in the report um, there are over 58 references on adverse health effects associated with water damaged buildings this is a bit I love as a researcher is making sure this is up to date provides the evidence for clients to show yes there's sufficient um, documentation to show that water damaged buildings can cause health effects from asthma, allergies, chronic respiratory tract infections, recurrent colds and flus, bronchitis, tonsillitis, laryngitis, and of course pneumonia and long-term fatiguing syndromes like chronic fatigue. So a lot of data there. All of those references are at the back of the report. Legislation, any legislation that relates to testing water damaged buildings in Australia that relates to the Work Health and Safety Act, as well as the National Construction Code for New Builds and the Residential Tenancy Act and regulations. 
Standards for testing and remediating water buildings, uh, water damaged buildings. There's some information here. Exposure guidelines, which we follow here through the college, um, for in airborne total spore counts and surface total spore counts. We follow the Australian mold guidelines. For mold remediation, I've decided to include this section. I think it's important because when I talk about what condition that substrate is in or that room, clients want to know, and I believe they have the right to know what you mean by that. It's important they understand the language of restoration and remediation. So I have included this as um, pre-knowledge in the beginning of the report to help them understand when I say it's in condition two, this is what the lab is seeing on the microscopic slide. So that's important. I think that's important. Methodology, of course, is mainly at the back of the audit. So the methodology we follow certain standards, um, ASTM, for example, S520, etc. Uh, assessments and results in the day. So the microclimate, if people are in humid climates, of course, their risk for microbial growth in the house is, is much higher. History of water events, which we took when we interviewed the client. So when they occurred, um, what category or class of water, if they know the description of the event. Air quality table, remember we took all those air quality readings at the beginning of the assessment, uh, very important. So, you know, if you've got high levels of specific humidity that are in excess of the outdoors, that's important, that's a red flag. The beauty with the way the app puts it together is you can see the exterior um, readings are first and that's what we're comparing it to the interior readings here so you know that's important to note and then the exterior investigation all the photos you took what reasons you know subfloor vents clear concealed gutters moisture pulling in the rear of the yard minimal down pipes you know all the issues you found on the outside remember you're adding these as a separate item when when you're downloading that into the app this is the exterior visual inspection um, with the interior inspection, with the room analysis, if there was any surface um, investigation, it would be included under the bathroom. So here you can see here with the kitchen, for example, laundry, visible mould, living room, etc. Um, you know, different parts of the house. So what your interior inspection was showing. So with the master bedroom, you can see here, this is the master bedroom and uh, we took various ATP readings for microbial growth, um, also looked at the smooth edge, um, etc. So your any surface uh, condensation or water damage was documented as well as the room itself. So it collates the room information with the surfaces information that you upload it into the app. So again, Sarah's bedroom, what's going on here is the room. Um, you know, visible mold, clutter, pest activity, and the surfaces, what was found in the surfaces of that room. Moisture mapping, any moisture mapping that was conducted, the moisture maps were uploaded, which hasn't been done in this case. Um, heating, ventilation, air conditioning systems, you know, any bio tapes that you took, for example, on the condensing coil or whatever, um, documenting it here. So each HVAC um, system is documented into this section. And of course, the lab results. The beauty of the app, it collates, well, how many samples did you take? How many air versus surface samples? What condition were they in? Fungal particulate load, which you documented individually um, in the outside readings compared to the inside readings. Um, of course, how to analyze lab results is a science. We spent a lot of time in the mold testing course looking at this, you know, using both the control and the reference method i.e. the outdoor sample, which is often problematic on rainy days when you have, have high levels of, you know, cladosporum and ascospores, then it's not very helpful, as opposed to the reference method where you're comparing similar rooms, water damage versus non-water damage, similar rooms is much more helpful. So um, analyzing that. And then of course, this is the observation, interpretation, recommendation section. So, for each observation, where was the moisture source, what's your interpretation, what's your recommendation, and who do they need to fix the problem? I love the way this is presented. It's just so clear for the client or for the remediator to be able to see what the problem is and how it needs to be fixed. So this is just a beautiful part of the mold app and the, and the report, the way it's presented. And it provides these priorities so the client can go, okay, this is what I need to, to deal with first.
appendices and floor plans you can see you can upload all the plans here the lab reports you can upload here glossary of terms is already fixed in the in the app so you don't have to worry about that so there is already glossary of terms uh, and the methodology I spoke about before we were uploading each item so what it looks like the function how it was used so this is how to write this section uh, once this is done just get the guys at flow mobile to fix it for every report you do from now on so you don't have to keep dumping this data into the into the app so what do I use for uh, air sampling what did I use for humidity readings what did I use as a moisture meter um, you know what do I use for surface samples what do I use for thermal imaging? That's important that you document what it is, how it was used, how, etc. The mold remediation guidelines are fixed in the report. And I think this is an important part because when I'm talking to clients as to what condition the substrates or different items are in, they can go here and go, okay, if they choose to remediate themselves, and many do, even though I don't recommend it, they may not have the financial capacity to get a remediator so they often do it themselves so if it's a non-porous item in condition two which means we can't see the mold but it had high levels of fungal particulate on the surface and or air sample then this is what needs to be done to address that condition three means there's actual mold growth on it so obviously depending on the porosity of the substrate and the condition it is this gives them a guidelines of how remediation should be undertaken then we have the reference list based on all the adverse health effects here and that's the end of the mould report of what it actually looks like. Alright, what I'd like to show you now is the mould app. So to access, if you're interested in looking at uh, and getting a free trial of the mould app, you can get a free trial by clicking on this link or getting on getting onto the URL flowmobile.app with a double P slash experts slash Nicole. Uh, it will take you to this page where there will be a video of myself and Paul talking about the app. There's also video there on how to use the app, what the features of the app are, how to set up a job, all of these amazing features within the job. If you're interested in uh, training in mould testing the Australian College of Environmental Studies runs nationally accredited training uh, which is three months part-time and involves online which is live zoom sessions as well as two days of field training and provides industry best practice for more information refer to aces.edu.au thank you and enjoy the app